Bright city lights from day to midnight Break the clouds and descend from bird flight Bright city lights Everybody could agree that the bar has been set very high. The design of transport line. That's a, a hell of a statement to say. And I think it's very important for us to be realistic what we can achieve by 2014 and where the value is of world design capital. So from my perspective, the city the city administration, we can have the city's initiatives. I need to decide what can we how can we embrace this opportunity to Live design transport the life from a city perspective. Can we use design to bridge this divide we have in the city? Can we use design to deal with the issues of gentrification, urbanization, sanitation, food security, transportation, all those very high-level abstractive issues which um, the city is facing on a daily basis? What are the expectations of the various citizens? live in these different communities? What is their expectation of 2014? And how is the city going to transform their lives um, between now and, and the year? So let's start with the city. What is a city? It's this massive network, this massive organism, forever changing. It's got minds of its own. And if we were to look at it in the context of a problem, we would probably need to first understand a little bit more about it. You get complicated problems and you get complex problems. Complicated problems generally can resolve. You can model it, you can put an algorithm to it, and you can probably come up with some sort of solution that you can solve it. In a city context, we're looking at a complex system. A system which is dynamic, it's forever changing, you change something here, something happens up here. You change this, something happens over here. It's always moving. It's hard to actually get to a point where you feel you've got it under control. It's got a lot of dependencies. There's a lot of ambiguity in that system. There's often very, there's often so much data that one can't see the wood from the trees, and there's often a lot of data that doesn't exist. So one has to make a lot of assumptions. So we will turn this a wicked problem. And I think the key with the wicked problem is one must understand that it can't be solved, but it can be managed. And the first thing you've got to realize is that we are dealing with the wicked problem, so we don't go down the route that this kind of solves us. Let's see how we can understand it and then design various interventions to help manage it and control it. Because the problems we have today will be different to the problems we have tomorrow, and will be different to the problems we have next year. So we've got to be able to have a dynamic approach to solve those, those problems. If one could map what a wicked problem might look like, to bring it to a visual perspective, this is typically what you might see. I think this is a um, part of a healthcare system and interrelationships you would find uh, between nurses and doctors. You can see very complex. Often wicked problems are a certain very strong social context to them. So you've got a lot of relationships, you've got a lot of people issues, a lot of technical issues, all of which you need to mesh into, um, into the problem statement. And as a human being, sitting on the outside, with a certain cognitive capacity, you'd look at this wicked problem and wouldn't know where to start. So the critical thing, first of all, in understanding such a system like a city is we've got to model it, we've got to understand it, we've got to see how are the relationships, what are the causal relationships from one concept to another. That will help us understand the system, this dynamic system that we're working with. Once we've got a good understanding of it, then we can start bringing design interventions with an understanding
understanding of how that intervention is actually going to affect the system as a whole. No silver bullet. It's a process. We've got to, we have to have patience, we've got to understand it, and we've got to work with it. So, it was Einstein that said that we have to use a different kind of thinking. Or, we cannot solve problems with the same thinking that we use when we create them. So, the city is looking at World Design Capital as an opportunity to change the way we think. This is the opportunity for us to look at the problems that we've had, come after 20 years of democracy, we've got to change the way we think because we haven't made the progress we wanted to make, we're applying an old type of thinking to a new type of problem, and we need to change. <coughs> so, in comes the word design, well designed capital, the saving, it's going to change everything for us. We've got to be very careful because what is design? If you get a group of designers around a the table, they'll all give you a completely different perspective of what design is. So we've got to be careful of what we want to do with design. How are we going to use design for 2014? We're certainly not going to go and design a lot of products and objects and systems. It's not about that. We don't have the time. We're not going to go and build a stadium or a new hospital bank, a new big infrastructure project. 2014 is an opportunity for us to start a process, to start a way. And that's the strategy we have to look at. So we dig a little bit deeper into the value of design. And the value of design, yes, it's, it is the object at the end of the day, the system, the process. But more so, it's the design process, the design thinking process, which is what we want to tap into, and the value of that. So in a simplistic form, a design process will allow you to go divert it in your thinking, so creative thinking, abductive logic, no real data, but let's try this because we think it could be a solution. And then it goes through a convergent process where we iterate and we test and we prototype and we learn as we go. Because we don't have the data. We know the attributes that we need to achieve at the end of the day. For example, if we need to design a transportation system, um, it needs to function at this efficiency, at this level, etc. But what it is, we don't know. But the design process will allow you to go to, through that journey to discover the solution. <coughs> and that process, really, what a common term that one uses today is called design thinking. And that is the methodology, the thinking process that we want to infuse into the city over the next two years. It's very different to the way that the city currently operates. We want to try and bring it into the projects that they run and ultimately into the systems and underlying culture of the, of the city itself. So we want to foster research, ideation, prototyping, experimentation. Very different to what the city currently does, but 2014 gives us an opportunity to be disruptive and let's try this out. <coughs> so within the city, um, there's a department being set up, which I'm heading up, um, and over the next two years, we're going to be looking at how do we bring in this creative thinking, this design thinking, into the organization. How do we use current projects, um, a platform, um, so that we can come up with better solutions than we have in the past to deal with the ever more complex issues that we're going to be facing tomorrow. I think the critical thing about 2014 is that there's only so much we can do between now and the year. The official event starts on the 1st of January 2014. So 2014 is not a, it, it is about the year in the sense of the uh, promotion and the messaging that we need to get out, but it's about the future. It's about 2020, it's about 2030, it's about 2040. And all the work that we're going to be doing inside the city and the projects that we are going to be helping to facilitate and align ourselves with will be aligned to a long-term strategy of bringing design and creative thinking and collaborative platforms with the creative industries, internally and externally. All that is we're going to build those foundations between now and 2014. You'll probably find that during the year of 2014 is when we actually launch maybe a new project which follows a new process, a new way of thinking a much more collaborative environment where we have creative thinkers and engineers
and the accountants and the legal people all working together on a project team to come up with ideas. To allow the system and the process that we follow to follow an iterative learning experience. There's obviously a lot of constraints that we need to focus on within the city. There's a lot of legal requirements, there's a lot of policy requirements. But all of that needs to go through a change and that's why we're not going to do that by 2014. But perhaps by 2020 we would have had a bit more of a balance between the creative thinking that the city really needs as well as the type of thinking that a city administration currently has. Thank you very much.